Sometimes we find that we need to use more than one image to make our photographs. For example, in the 1800s, Gustav Le Gray found that he could not make a landscape photograph that had both a beautiful foreground and a beautiful detailed sky. Instead, he figured out he could make two photographs at different times and combine the images in a darkroom-like process. This tradition continues in contemporary photography with the use of programs like Photoshop. Maggie Taylor uses layers to combine multiple images together to create her dreamlike scenes. Artist and software engineer Matt Wisniewski combines portraits with landscape images using a masking technique and layers. The portraits act as window mats that allow you to see certain portions of the nature-inspired image that he has placed underneath them. This image by Alex Heiner shows 20 different views from the same location, utilizing the lines and the composition as places for his digital collage work to be disguised, and creating a lovely stained glass effect. Using Gustav Le Gray as our inspiration, for our first example, we will use two images to combine a seascape with a cloudy sky. Start by opening two landscape photographs that are about the same size. For your sky image, use Command A to select the canvas, then Command C to copy the canvas. Return to your seascape image where you plan to add your new sky. Next, I'm going to unlock my layer just so I have a few more choices in a few minutes. I do this by double clicking on the name of the layer in this case, background. Hit OK when the dialog box opens. This will make your layer an active layer and will remove the lock. To paste, use Command V to place your new image on top of your other image. Take a moment to note that whatever image is on top will be the one that you're able to see at a given time. If you switch which image is on top by dragging it down below the first layer, you'll see the other image on top. Using the rectangular marquee tool, I'm going to select which parts of the image I want to remain visible so that I can allow the sky from the image underneath to show through. With my seashore selected, I'm going to go over to my layers palette. Make sure the top layer is selected before you move on to the next step. At the bottom of the layers palette, you'll find a small button that looks like a rectangle with a circle in it. Click on this to add a layer mask to the selected layer. You'll notice that the mask automatically adjusts to your marquee selection. In this case, you can see my sky layer is slightly smaller than my landscape layer. I can fix this simply by using my crop tool and bringing the image in slightly. Next, I want to address this harsh transition between my top image, my sky, and my bottom image, my sea. I like this little pink horizon that I've got, and I'd like to blend it into that cloud. And you'll also notice I have a little bush over here that I want to make sure doesn't get caught off in a strange way. In your layers palette, click on the mask on the layer you would like to edit. Notice the brackets are highlighting the layer, and this means it is the active area you'll be working with right now. Also notice that the part of the image you can see is shown in white, whereas the part that has disappeared or has been masked out is shown in black. Since the transition between the two layers is rather rough right now, we're going to use our paintbrush tool to paint either white or black accents along that line to soften it up and help blend the two layers. I'm selecting a brush that's wide enough that I can do this in a single stroke while also making sure I select a brush that has a good feathered edge to create a soft transition. Using my white paint, I'm going to just run my mouse along this edge between the two images to try to soften up that line. You'll see how using black will make the sky image appear more and switching to my white paint will make that pink horizon pop up a little more. Another way to help this line blend a little better is to use the mask palette. In this case, it's directly above my layers palette. There's a slider on here that says feather, which will do a lot of good in helping make sure our lines that we've made with our paintbrush are nice and soft. Above that is a density slider. 
and this will allow us to show a little bit more of what we're masking out. So play with it to see if it gives you an effect you like. Another tool you can use with your mask is your gradient tool. So remember your gradient tool will fade from black to white or from black to clear and you can set that line up right on your horizon. In this case to fade my pink cloud into my white cloud nicely. Remember you can toggle the eyeball in your layers palette to see how your layer is looking. You can also right quick click on your mask to disable it to see if the mask is doing what you want it to do. When you're satisfied with your piece, you can save your PSD document which will remember your layers and your mask. You should also save a JPEG which will lose all of your layer information. To blend layers with more complicated relationships, we're going to use other tools. So as before, we've opened our two images. In this case, there's a plant and there's a building with a doorway in it. Both the doorway and the plant have a dark black background, so I'm hoping I can make it seem like the plant is hanging inside this doorway. To do this, I'm going to, as before, copy and paste my image onto my new page. Since this plant should be behind the door image, just to make my life easier, I'm going to double click on my background layer to remove the lock and hit enter when it asks me what to name my layer. And then I'm going to move that layer on top of my plant layer, so my plant layer is going to disappear as my doorway reappears. So again, if I turn my doorway off, the plant layer is still there. My plant layer is hidden underneath my doorway. This time I'm using my lasso tool because this door has an interesting doorknob I'd like to keep in my image, and it's got some dirt on the bottom I'd like to be able to blend into that black background on my plant. So I'll be using my lasso tool, and I'm using the polygonal lasso tool in this case because it has a little more control for what I'm doing. I'm going to zoom in. You can see that doorknob I'm trying to save. And I even like that little bit of gradient right on the edge. So let's see what we can save. So I'm going to cut out around this hole where I want my plant to show through. And I'm going to tell you a secret. These white graphics are going to give me a problem. I'm going to later on have to go ahead and erase them for this to work really well. So for now, I have blotted out the part that I'm planning on deleting from this top image, but I want to do this with a mask so that way I can bring parts back if I need to or I can later go on and fix those stencils so they won't show through my image. So just as before I'm going to hit my mask button which is at the bottom of my layers palette, the square with the circle in it. And when I do, you'll notice because I have this center part of the door selected when I hit it, I actually have the wrong part of the image showing. I want the door frame to be showing as opposed to the contents of the door. Notice also that the small little mask preview on our layers palette shows that the outside is black, meaning it's hidden, and then that center part is white. So we can tell that this is obviously not what we intended. We intended the opposite. So in the mask palette, we see there's a button called Invert that will switch the black and white areas of our mask, thus making us be able to see the wall and not the door. Now that I can see my sublayer, this is a good time for me to readjust its position or readjust its size so it fits in the window the way I want it to. I can either use my Move tool and just scoot it around the screen, or I can use Command-T for Free Transform so that I can adjust the size so that it fits more appropriately in my little space. Once I have my piece properly sized, I can address this problem of this awkwardly sharp outline I have around my piece. The goal is that this black, this kind of soft black of the door is going to blend in with this hard black of my background studio shot image. First thing I try is going to my mask palette and looking at my feather slider to see if I can just soften that up. Maybe I can magically soften it enough that, that it will work. But of course this one is just too blunt. It's, it's not quite. I start to lose my doorknob as you can see. It's almost there. So you can see that softer, that softer edge will really make a big difference. So I'm going to set this back to zero while I'm working on the mask. So just like before, I'm going to make sure that I've selected the mask. I'm going to make sure I have my brush tool 
and make sure I have a nice soft feathered brush and a large enough size brush. In this case I want it to be pretty large and using my white paint on that uh, masking layer I'm going to paint out as close to the plant as I can and make a nice soft border that kind of protects that little doorknob. And you can see now I'm having parts of the door detail show back up. I'm not going to be able to hide if I want to make a really nice smooth transition. So once I've accepted that I need to work more on that image, I'm going to hide my plant then I'm going to right click on my mask and hide it. You see their little red X. So my mask is still there, it's just hidden right now. And now I can take the time to work on this stencil that, while very interesting, is not working for my image. So I'm going to use a couple different tools. There's a healing mask and there's a patch tool. Before I do, I need to make sure in my layers palette that I've actually clicked on the image of the uh, door, not on the mask. So make sure those brackets are on the image of the door. Then I'm going to use my healing brush and my patch tool to erase this detail little bit by little bit. Since this isn't a patching lesson, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this bit. So we're just going to turn this door into a black door. Next, I'm going to re-enable my layer mask so I can see the hole that I've made and I'm going to turn back my little plant layer on. I can go ahead and try that feather slider again to see if I'm any happier with it now that those white marks are missing. And once I get this soft enough that I'm actually pretty happy with how the blend is looking, I can go back to my paintbrush and refine the image. So again, I'm going to be using white paint to make the black door appear over the the picture of the plant, and I'll use black paint in case I accidentally make any part of the plant disappear, like if I paint over a little bit of the uh, root. So what I'm doing now is I've actually decided to go ahead and use the lasso tool because I'm just still not quite happy with this, and what I'm doing is I'm lassoing out the section of the door that I'm still trying to blend in with my plant layer. So I'm going to use a layer called exposure. I'm just looking to get this image to be a little bit darker in, in value and to have just a little bit more drama, but only in this square that I've selected. So you can see in my layers palette, I have a mask that shows me what any exposure adjustments I'm about to make are going to apply to. So if I grab my exposure slider and bring it down, you can see I've made my door much, much darker. But I've also made my plant layer darker, which is not what I'm looking for. To fix this, right click on your exposure layer and select Create Clipping Mask. You'll notice that the layer now has a tiny arrow pointing down below it, and this means that this exposure is only going to darken this layer that my door is on, and not the plant layer below it. Make sure you toggle the eyeballs to see how this works, because it's really cool. Next, I want to fix this really hard line I've made on this mask. You can see that it almost looks like it's a kick plate or something, this rectangle. So I'm going to use the gradient tool, which is under the paint bucket tool, both of which are using the G for the shortcut. And once I have my gradient tool, remember that when I click point A, it's the foreground color, and when I click point B, it's the background color. And I like to double check what my mask looks like to make sure I know which colors I'm trying to go for. So in this case, my door cutout is white. I'm trying to apply the exposure layer to the white area that is I'm trying to make the door darker. So in order to blend the bottom of the door I need a gradient to blend the white into the black. So I'm going to use a black gradient over the white to soften the transition between the two parts of my mask. Using the solid to the transparent option in the properties bar of the gradient panel I can make sure that the bottom edge of my mask is nicely blended. Be sure to use that eyeball to see if you believe me, to see if that mask is softly blended, or to see if you need to do a further gradations. When you're satisfied with the piece that the exposure is correct, that the layer masks are appropriately applied and softened and feathered and look 
good and realistic even when you zoom in and out of the image. Then you're ready to save your project. So go to File, Save. Remember you'll be prompted to save as a layered image, a PSD project. Label the file in a helpful way and then hit Save. To save the file as a JPEG, simply go to File, Save As, and then select JPEG from the drop-down preset menu. You'll notice that Layers says that it won't be saved, and there's a warning, so just to understand, you need to have your PSG saved as a separate document. Then hit OK. It will ask you about how much you would like your JPEG compressed. I recommend not compressing it as much as possible, and then hit OK. So you see you can use your paintbrush, your gradient tool, your marquee tools, along with your adjustment masks and layer masks to create interesting images that combine multiple photographs.